Good evening. Good evening. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It is great to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good seeing each and every one of you. We're glad you're here. Um, celebrate a lot of things coming up, so just want to go over some announcements. Tomorrow, if you are a senior, I'm not looking at anyone. If you feel, no, not if you feel like a senior. You've got to be a senior. I, I will let you determine how old that is. Uh, if you are a senior, I, I really was, the last year when I turned, I'm 56, I'll be 57, but when I turned 55, I was doing okay until I went to Perkins. And then at Perkins, I turned on the back page and it says, Seniors Menu, 55 and older. <laughs> then I started hurting more than I've hurt before. And so, anyway, but if you are a senior, we have the pastors, Pastor Don and I and, and Patty, we cook breakfast for you all. It's our way of saying, hey, we love you, we thank you, we serve you. We want you to come. We usually have a real good turnout, have a lot of fun. So that's tomorrow at 9 o'clock. It's in the Upper Fellowship Hall. You're coming through the red door on, on Center Street, and that's the senior's breakfast is tomorrow. We are also having then uh, the WSG, the Women's Support Group, and I believe they are meeting in the Haven Maternity Home this way. And, uh, and so they're looking at what, what uh, uh, rooms they may be working on and things like that. So... If you've not been to a WSG meeting, I encourage you to go because uh, I actually, my wife doesn't tell me anything that happens at the meeting. I try to stay away from the house until late, at least 8.30 and then until there's no women there. And, and so, but every woman I have ever talked to who's gone to the WSG has, has said it's really, it's, it's powerful. And, no. <laughs> women support group. Women. women. And if you're not sure if you're a man or woman, I will tell you. Uh, <laughs> We don't have any of that stuff. Is there uh, anything on your Facebook page where I could put it online in case some local women might want to go? Or is there anything written up? It, it's on our website. On Facebook? Yeah, check out. Okay. Check, I don't know if it's on the Facebook, but it's on the website. I've never been to the website. The website is ashavenuechog.org. I can find it. Okay. And so, uh, anyway, and also men... Men, we are meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and, and Chuck is very excited about that. And we are having taco night, uh, so different guys. What's that? No. Women got to go to WSG. Men come here. And so uh, we're not confused here at all. We know. <laughs> and, and so uh, men, tomorrow we're going to be talking about how our differences complement us. So I encourage you to come, even if you're not able to bring anything Come, it's at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a great time. Hoagie is bringing cow tongue to eat in a taco if you, if you are brave. Yeah, yeah. I've had cow tongue before. Uh, this is garlic-infused balsamic vinegar red. Espresso, baby, and a puppy. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see on that. So a um, lot, of, lot of exciting things coming up. So um, this Saturday, then, is our baked steak dinner. And that is a fun time. Uh, we still need some workers. And and you need we need them to help with um, serving. Serving. So what times do you need to be here? So if you want to serve, because trust me, we have like an avalanche of people very very quickly come in here. We usually run out. Of meals, and so at two o'clock, if you're able to serve or help clean up or anything like that, then we would definitely, definitely could use you. This, so that's Wife's this Saturday. Coming. What's that? Wife's coming, so am I, but we'll be here at eight Saturday morning. Excellent. So, any announcements I might have forgotten? Uh, for those of you who also on Sunday afternoon, we have been invited to the Wayman AME, uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church in Wheeling. It's in, on Oaf Street. Uh, they're having a sing. Uh, that's kind of like for us Caucasians, it's kind of like a sing-along. And they're having a sing this next Saturday, uh, Sunday at 3 o'clock. And so I was invited, and, and uh, I know some of the people there. And they said, bring some of your white people. So uh, come on down. Uh, come on by. It, uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So. Other than that, are there any other announcements? All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Holy Father, we come before you and we thank you and we praise you. You are our God. And, and Lord, I ask, uh, as we talk about a topic we've heard before, as a talk, a top, talk about a topic we've talked about before, as we talk about a topic we talk about all the time, but Lord, help us tonight to, to capture a, a fresh vision for it. Help us tonight to, to really, truly take it into our lives, and not just something that we hear, but something that we do. So, we always want the ears to, to hear you and the eyes to see you, but most important, tonight, let us, let us hear what you have for us, and, and let us truly take it in, because it, it's so important. So, Lord, we come before you now, and we ask that you'll be glorified, we ask that you'll anoint our time, and most of all, Lord, that we will see you, because that's what it's about. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, and if you are taking this for a class, then the tests are up here. You can get one afterwards. Uh, I am really excited about what... Uh, we have about four or five more weeks of, of this class, and then we're going to start a class. I actually taught here about six years ago, give or take, but I'm going to add to it a lot, and that is what do false religions and what do others believe? So what, are, what is Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, uh, uh, on Scientology? Uh, all kinds of stuff. We're going to look at that on Wednesday night. So in four or five weeks, we're going to be starting that whole new class lesson, and it's going to be going to be interesting. And uh, then I'm really, really praying about. I think we may take a break from doing some cheering classes for a little bit, and I think we may do some stuff with the uh, fireproof. Fireproof was a, a movie that came out several years ago, uh, focusing on marriage. And if we do go that route, then what we're going to do is we would have a class for those who are not married. And then a class for marriages. So we'll pray about that, talk about that. So kind of excited about what God's doing on Wednesday night. So I'm glad that each of you here is here. But uh, tonight, we're going to talk about a topic that we talk about a lot. And we're going to talk about a topic that we all know it works. We, we, we've heard this. We believe in it. But the question is, is how come we don't do more of it? And, of course, I'm talking about prayer. Every one of us knows how powerful prayer is. Every one of us. Ha, have you ever had a prayer answered in your life? A few of us. Okay. And, and, and so, and if I asked every one of us, we believe in prayer and, and God honors prayer. Absolutely, we would say that. So the question is then, how come we use prayer as a last resort? Or, or how come we are not praying more? How come we, are, we tend to be more reactive? In, in, instead of waiting upon what the Lord has. And so uh, tonight we're going to take a, a good look at it, but I, I don't want to just take a look at it. I want to encourage us. This is, this is probably, this scripture reading service is probably the cornerstone of spiritual disciplines. Uh, spiritual disciplines are very important. Doing what we need to do to, to specifically grow close to God, to work on it, that's so crucial. But, but prayer is probably the bedrock. It's one of the the huge one. So uh, do not answer this question out loud. But number one, the first part of the question, though, is how is your prayer life? Now, don't answer this out loud. Don't, I'm not a priest. You don't have to confess anything to me. Uh, how is your prayer life? And, and uh, it, that's the most crucial question that we have to ask because uh, I, I, we pray before the meals, and, and sometimes we do the sleepy person's prayer, you know, yeah, dear Lord, be with, you know, and then we fade off. And, and so how are we truly praying? Are we only praying uh, when there's crisis? How much praise during our prayer do we do? Uh, how much meditation? We talked about meditation last week where we're, we're just letting Scripture go through our minds. Boom, we're focusing on the Word of God. And so I want to encourage you to really take a deep, deep, hard look at how your prayer life is. Uh, every one of us can pray more. And, and uh, you know, statistically, the average Christian prays for four minutes a day other than, other than um, meals. And, and so pastors shouldn't, we shouldn't get too excited because statistically pastors other than meals or functions typically pray six minutes a day. So we wonder why our society and our culture is the way it is if Christians are only praying four to six minutes a day. And, and so take a deep, just, just kind of file it away, and don't beat yourself up, but just be honest with how is your prayer life. And, and so uh, that kind of leads us in, 
why do some people, why do people struggle with prayer? What are some things that, that we struggle with prayer about? Okay, don't believe. My, my uncle uh, had, uh, my uncle's first wife passed of cancer, and when, when she uh, had cancer, my uncle actually, a pastor, he's one of my mentors, he pastored her for 40 plus years and was, was uh, had the top, had the largest church in Canada, an incredible man of God. But what was incredible was he, he made a statement when Jan had cancer, and he said to her, he said to the people, he said, don't you pray if you don't believe he, she's going to be healed. And I, I kind of was offended by that a little bit. I said, are you telling people not to pray? He said, that's right. I don't, I don't want any fake prayers. I want, I want people who believe that she's going to be healed. And if you don't believe she's going to be healed, don't pray it. And uh, um, I understand what he's saying, and, but that was pretty powerful. And so, uh, so people may not believe it. What are, other, what, are other area, what are other ways that we struggle with prayer? Tony? Lack of intimacy, intimacy is, is very powerful, and, and that's why scripturally we're to love the Lord with all of our heart, body, and soul, and mind, and that, that encompasses all our physical, emotional, and spiritual together. So what are, what are some other ways, what are some other reasons that people could struggle with prayer? They don't get the answer we want. Don't get the answer we want, you know, and not only we may not get the answer we want, but also, what about the timing? We want it right now. <laughs> You know, Lord, help me out of the situation right now. And, and have you ever noticed that God's time is a whole lot different than our time? H have you noticed that we're on the fast track? We're microwave people, but God is kind of, you know, like a roaster people. He, God is, is kind of takes his time when he wants to. And, and so uh, any, anyone else, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but anyone else, why, why, what are some reasons that people struggle with prayer? Okay, okay, we're not worthy to pray to him. Okay, okay, okay. Your mind is other places. Your mind is other places. You guys are giving some really good answers. Uh, I was thinking another kind of basic, how about time? You know, it's very important that, that we get, we're, sometimes we're very busy, but we don't get a lot done. Now, how can that statement be made? Because it kind of, it's, a, it's an oxymoron, it kind of contradicts itself. How can we be so busy we don't get anything done? Your brain runs around in circles, and, and today Janine sent me to Walmart to pick up one thing, and I left Walmart with eight things, and I sat back down at my desk, and I looked, and I didn't get the one thing she sent me there for, so I got to go afterwards, and, and I thought, what is my problem? It is sometimes we get so busy, we think we're so busy, but again, what is, what is important to us? We make time. If you want to look at what is important in your life, look at your time and your wallet. Because those are what you are, are important to you. And, and so that's a, that's a good list of tests. So here, here we see as we talk about prayer, we, we've given some uh, reasons why. It's, it's hard, but, but we need to understand too, one of the biggest reasons that prayer is hard is because we've got an enemy who doesn't want us to pray. We have an enemy that does everything he can to stop us from praying. You see, the devil doesn't mind if you read the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, someone else will say, well, that verse means this. Or did you read the original Greek and Hebrew? Or did you read the King James and the New International Version? I mean, the devil says, oh, I really don't want him in the Word, but I can twist that a little bit. That's what he does. And the devil doesn't mind when we serve others because the devil says, hey, aren't you so good? Oh, I'm such a good Christian. I'm doing so wonderful, and we can get so proud and things like that. But when we pray, when we connect with him, when we plug into the source, that's when the devil gets really bothered. And, and, and so he will, he will cause our minds to run around. He will, he will cause the phone. I'll tell you what, if you don't have any phone calls and you want someone to call you, you start praying. Someone will call you. Even if it's a telemarketer from Texas, you still will get a call. 
uh, because the enemy will, will stop that. So, so we're going to look tonight, again, this, is, this isn't anything new for you guys, and it's not anything new for me, but it's, it's just something that, that is so crucial to growing closer to God. So number one, Jesus taught us to pray. What's Luke 11, 1 say, please? One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. This is God taught his disciples. And then, of course, then what did Jesus say? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so this is fascinating because nowhere do we see that Jesus taught us to preach. Nowhere do we see that t- Jesus taught us to help. Didn't teach us how to heal, but he taught us how to pray. So prayer, it, it, prayer is the direct conduit in which everything else forms out of. Prayer is the, is the foundation in which we build our spiritual life. And, and what we need to understand is, is our prayer life is, is directly correlational to our spiritual growth. If we want to grow spiritually, we got to pray more. And, and we're going to talk specifically about prayer in, in a second. And so I want to encourage you to be real honest and know this was something so important that Jesus made a point of you've got to pray. There's some false concepts of prayer. Uh, and the first one in the material, boy, I looked at that and I thought, I disagree with that. And I looked over and, I, and then I, it took me about a few times of, of reading over and, tell, and, and studying and I thought, okay. Uh, but here, here uh, the material for Centurion said, the fa- a false concept of prayer is that there's power in the act of praying. And, and I thought, well, I disagree with that. I mean, there is power in praying, but we need to really, really take a look at it. Is the power is not in the prayer. The power is who we are praying to. Prayer is, is, is adoration, it's confession, it's thanksgiving, it's supplication. Prayer is, is coming before Lord, is connecting with Him. But our prayers itself are not powerful. But it is the one we are praying to. And, and that's why uh, I was in, in a minister's group and um, a, a person wanted to do an ecumenical thing with, with Muslim. They want to do Muslim and they want to do Hindu. They want to do all the group. Uh, and they said, we want to have a prayer meeting. And I said, I, I can't do that. Oh, you're being intolerant. I said, no. I said, we're not praying to the same people. I'm praying to Jesus, you're praying to, to Muhammad. I'm praying to Jesus, you're praying to Krishna. And, and if we can't even agree on who to pray with, to pray to, my power does not come from Muhammad or Krishna. My power comes from Jesus Christ. And, and so it's not our praying that's power, because what happens if we thought, I've got power when I pray. What, hap- what, can, what can we happen to us? Right. What, what can we start thinking in our minds? That we are in control. Right. You know, it's like the farmer. That's why farmers' thumbs always stink. Well, I'll tell you. And, and so that's what we, we have to see. What's First Kings 18.36 say, please? And we... That's what prayer enables us to connect with the power of God. It, it's not the prayer itself. It, it is the one we are connecting with. And, and, and that's what's so powerful. And, and also another false concept of prayer is more praying leads to more results. Th- this is something uh, uh, I, I know people who, who are very adamantly prayer. Matter of fact, uh, the Islam faith is one of the most a uh, disciplined group of people. Uh, a, a true, a pure Muslim will pray at least five times a day t- uh, toward Mecca. And I, I've had Muslim friends who would, they even to work, they would carry their little, ra- their, uh, little uh, rug, roll it out, and boom, they'd, they'd bow down. And I've had friends that have actually had on their foreheads, they've actually had where they've worn down, where they, they pray. Uh, and so you can pray a whole lot, but if you're not praying to God, it ain't going to help. If you're not praying to the one who has the power, it's not going to work. This terrible fallacy from the devil of all roads lead to heaven? No. There's only one road, and his name is Jesus. 
There's only one path, and that He is the way. And so here, here's what we see is, is more praying leads to more results. Is, it's a lie. Uh, this is a tough thing, too. And I, I tell this, I said, if you are unsaved, God does not hear your prayers. And people, what, what are you talking about? God hears all prayers. No, He doesn't. It says in His Word. Uh, someone reads, it's not on here, but someone read Psalm 66, verse 18, please. It, it, it flat tells us that if there is sin in our lives, then God will not hear our prayers. And there is one prayer that God hears from those of a sinner, and that's the prayer of forgiveness. That's a prayer of saying, forgive me, Lord. And he does hear that, and he does honor that, and he does forgive us. But that's what we, Psalms very, very clearly, and Isaiah talks about it too, it very, very clearly is, is saying that, that we, we need to understand that, you know, how can you pray to God if you don't believe in him? How can you pray to a God that you've not... You, you don't honor, you don't, you're not living for. And so we, we need to understand that, that, that sin blocks us from, from uh, having that power of prayer. So number four, Jesus taught us that the first priority of private prayer, or, or, and this is talking about prayer, not a corporate prayer, not a, not a coming together prayer over meals, but a prayer where it's you and God, is intimate fellowship with God. Isn't it incredible how big God is. How, how big is God? I wanted to see how brave you guys were. <laughs> Infinite. Isn't it incredible, as big as that God is that we can't even describe him, isn't it incredible that he wants you to know him personally? Whew. That is pretty cool. Wow. That he knows you. He loves you. He wants you to spend time with him. I was sitting at Bob's lunch on Tuesday at my other office. Pay rent there. And a man walked in with a Hoagie's Heroes sweatshirt on. And I said, do you know Hoagie Carmichael? And he says, yeah. I said, he's a character. There's only one of them. But I know him. It made me feel happy. Think about that. That God has a sweatshirt with your name on it. Is that very theologically correct? Probably not. Think about that for a second. God loves you that much. He wants to spend time with you. And, and the first step, the first step, first priority of having that prayer is an intimate fellowship with God. Letting God love you. That's why Matthew 6, 9 says the Lord's Prayer, our what? Father. Father. Our Father. And, and, and the Greek word that's used there is Abba. It, it, it's, it's, it's the Latin word pattern, which, which is a closeness. This isn't just some biological dad. This is just some man who earns the bacon and, and is at the house who snores really loud. This is, this is dad. This is, this is our, our, our male protector, our male guider, our father. Do, do you see what an incredible privilege we have to know God? Wow! Think about that for a second. As big as God is, we can say, you are my father. In my 30s, my mom and my mother and father lived in, in Virginia, and, and wherever we were at, we usually spent about, we usually went on at least three trips, two or three trips, and spent a week with them at least. And, and it was fascinating. I was in my 30s, and, and I... I, I Notice something. I, I you know, and I, I was a peace officer. I was all that good kind of stuff. But I noticed something that I slept better on vacation when I was at my parents. And, and I, I, pro, I, you don't have time to think about what I think about. <laughs> Whew, this mind goes. Uh, 
I, I wouldn't bore you with all the little stuff. And, and I start processing. I process everything. I start processing, why am I sleeping better? Well, is it because I'm, I'm away on vacation and, you know, I'm not hearing about who's mad at who or who sat in my seat or, or you know. Uh, uh, no. I thought, no, I'm not really dealing with any stress. Or anything. Why do I sleep better? And it hit me. I slept better because my dad, my dad was in the next room. And my dad would not let anything hurt me. My dad would protect me. If there were a bad guy broke in, dad would shoot him. Not in the name of the Lord. He'd just shoot him. Dad was there. It affected my sleep because I was able to rest in that. And, and, and it's fascinating because uh, that intimacy is what God wants us to have with him. That's a peace. That's the peace that God, God wants you to have a peace that no matter what's going on in life, he's going to take care of you. No matter what you're facing, he's going to work all things out for the good of those who love the Lord. God wants you to have that connection that you cry out, you are my dad. You're my father. You're my Abba. And I love David in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't need anything because he's there. So the first step of, of, of really understanding prayer is just connecting, is just spending time talking with. When I first met Janine, you know, I remember, you got to remember, I was a peace officer. This here was up here. I had a sports car, a gun, a badge, a Rottweiler. I had everything. I was a hunk. I mean, I, I looked good. I, I was... I was handsome and all that good kind of stuff. And, and when I called her and said, do you want to go out for a date, baby? She said, no. I said, I'm sorry. Is this thing working? And, and I, I said, no. Don't you realize what a catch I am? She said, I don't know you. What do you mean you don't know me? Call me tomorrow. Call you tomorrow for three weeks. We talked on that dumb phone for hours and hours and hours. Because how do we get into a relationship with someone? Time and talking, communicating. Spending time together communicating. Listening and talking and sharing. That's how a relationship grows. And, and what's so beautiful is that's why some Christians are very spiritually immature because they're telling, they're doing all the talking. And they need to do more listening. God gave us two ears and one mouth. We were to listen twice as much as we talk. And so what happens is, is, is God wants to have that connection, that communion with us. Wow. I'll tell you what, that makes us something special. That means that you have value because that's how big that God is. And so fellowship with the Father was a priority of, of Jesus. What's the Matthew 15, 36 say, please? Here, here we see that even something so little, Jesus was thankful for. One of the sad things we in America do is we take things for granted. I encourage every Christian to go on a mission trip at least once in their lifetime. Uh, go to Haiti. Go, go to, down to, to not, not Tijuana or, the, or the, the ritzy place of Mexico. Go to, a, go to a village in Mexico where they don't have running water. Kenya is another example. Uh, India is, uh, we were, uh, Janine and I have been to India huts that, that did not have anything. And, and, and when a little boy has to walk a half mile to go get water from a stream that everyone else is bathing in, and we walk right to a faucet, we have so much. Are we really thankful for it? And so I want to encourage you that Jesus is teaching us that that fellowship is, is being thankful, thankful for all that we have. We have so much. What's Mark 135 say, please? Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Why did Jesus have to go be alone? Get away from the disciples. <laughs> Get away from the people. 
Peter, you snored all night. James and John, are you arguing about who has to do the dishes again? What is going on with you guys? He had to get away from the people. He had to get away from that. What happens in Matthew 14, 25, please? So this is very, very late. How many times in our lives can we not get to sleep because of everything that's going on in our minds? How many times do we not have a peace? Do you notice the devil always hits us at 2 or 3 in the morning? Have you ever woke up and all of a sudden you couldn't get back to sleep because you just, again, your mind is racing? You're, and, and so what did Jesus do? Jesus was with the Father. Jesus intentionally fellowshiped with him. And, and there were some effects. Number six is there's a couple of effects. There are many effects. But first of all, Jesus received encouragement from the Father. This is what I love about Jesus when he was here. Fully human. Fully human. Fully divine. Whew. Please explain that to me. You can't. I love when people say, I got the Trinity all figured out. No, you don't. You're silly. The Trinity is not an egg. It's not scrambled or over easy or, or runny. Uh, the Trinity is not water. It's frozen or ice or it's, it's steam. No, 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 no. The Trinity is all three at the same time. Whew. That doesn't make any sense. And so here we see is that Jesus, it tells us in Luke 2.52 that he grew in wisdom and knowledge and stature. We've talked about that, about what that meant. And, and so here we see is, is Jesus... Jesus is now stepping into his ministry. Jesus is now venturing out. And, and, and so I, I love this, is, is the Father wanted to let him know, hey, Matthew 17, 5, what did he say? Please. While he was still speaking, a dark cloud enveloped him, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am very pleased. Listen to him. Woo! When a cloud appears and you hear those words, you better listen. Woo! Man, what affirmation. We always say, well, if it was only sky written in the, in the sky, that was sky written in the sky. Here God was saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Do, do you see that? Because he had that intimacy, that's, he had that affirmation. And this is a, now, <laughs> Jesus was joined by the Holy Spirit. What's Luke 3.21, 3.22 say, please? Here you have a Trinitarian passage. Here, here you have the Trinity together. Wow! Explain it to me. You, you can't. You can't. It's impossible. That's how big God is. That's how incredible God is. God, our finite minds cannot comprehend an infinite God. Our mere mortal brains can in no way capture a glimpse of what immor the immortal all-powerful, omniscient, omnipresent God is. Wow. What, how incredible that is. And, and, and that God, as big as he is, he loves us and wants us to spend time with him, wants us to connect. So how to, how to and it's important, we need to reverently come into God's presence. And, and these are some ways on, on how we can do it. Come with adoration and praise. Does anybody have anything to praise God for? Everything. So if we have everything to praise, how often, do, don't answer this out loud, how often are we praising Him? Do we praise Him when, you know, we miss the fender bender? Do we praise Him when something good happens? Well, if we got everything to praise, then we really should be a people of praise. We really should, our our out of our hearts, we should, whoo, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wow, praise, we praise you and celebrate. So when we pray, what we're doing is we're coming with adoration and we praise. You know, you know that's the difference between dogs and cats. 
you, you see, you got a dog. A dog says, you know what? They give me shelter and they feed me. They must be a god. A cat says, they provide a shelter and they feed me. I must be a god. You see, that's the problem. And, and too often we get that mixed up. Too often we think that God is here for us. No, 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 we are here for God. And, and so come and just average. And this is a powerful one in church. This is, whoo, you've heard me talk about lemon sucking Christians. You've heard me talking about, about this. Come with joy. God is good. And as we celebrate that, let your face know it. If you're happy and you know it, what do you do? Clap, Clap your hands. If you're happy you know it, let your face will surely show it. That's what we as Christians need. Too many Christians want, oh, but you ladies did a Winnie the Pooh night. Oh, butter. You know, I told Janine, I said, were there any Eeyores? She goes, I'm not telling you. I said, oh, I see one right now. Oh, she didn't like that. You know, she's not here. So uh, anyway, so Joy, someone read Psalms 100 for us, please, because this passage just drips of joy, explodes with joy. Man, did you hear? You can't, if you're depressed, start reading Psalms 100. You can't read that and be depressed. Man, and how many of us came in the store and said, Woo-hoo! I get to come to church. Y'all get excited when you go to Walmart. I went to, I, I told you I went to Walmart. I went to Walmart and there's some people that they were like running in. I'm like, settle down. There's enough for everyone. Relax. Black Friday at Walmart, I go just to watch people. I don't buy a thing. I just, I stand in a corner. Wow, you see the craziest stuff. I, man, you'll see people fight over a toaster. I'm like, I'll buy the toaster for you. It's okay. It, it, it's amazing. I mean, joy, there is joy in the Lord. Woo. Let that joy come out. Is life hard? Amen. Will we have problems? John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble. Are we going to experience hurt? Are we going to experience pain? Absolutely. But joy comes in the morning. That's what, man, when we pray, we've got so much to be thankful for. You start listing all you have instead of what you don't have. You're going to realize that. Come with humility and boldness. What's Hebrews 4.16 say, please? So we come with humility. We are entering God's throne. But we can come with boldness. You know why? Because we're his kids. We're his kids. One year when Jonathan was in preschool, the, the preschool actually, the, the, the building, the pre Liberty Christian School that, that he was going to uh, was having some building maintenance problems. And so they came to our church for a while. We host hosted it, and it was funny because every now and then Jonathan would walk over to my office, and the kids go, you can't do that. That's the pastor. And he's like, no, he's not. He's dad. <laughs> and because and, and, he came into my office, and, and, and the other kids would just like, like wow, it's kind of like, well, y'all, when you ever go to the pastor's office, you're like, what did I do wrong? Why is he calling me in here? And, and it's like the principal. And, and, and so we can come with boldness, and this is good, come with clean high hands and a pure heart. What Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4 say, please? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He who, he who hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Arlo Newell, uh, a phenomenal, he's with the Lord now, one of our great, great, great men of God in the, in the church of God, one of our great leaders. I uh, preached a sermon on this text one day that I will never forget. And, and he tied in, it's with our hands. Our hands, if they're not clean, then that leads to impure heart. It's with our hands that we drink the beer. It's with our hands that we use the drugs. It's with our hands that we strike others when we shouldn't. It, it, it's a direct correlation with what we do and where we're at with God. 
And so clean hands. So, so what that means is we need to be coming to the Lord. And, and we're not perfect. No one is perfect. But we're in process. We're in process of drawing closer to him. And then this is so important. We've got to come with expectations. If we pray and we don't believe God will move, God will not move. He knows. If we're just going through the motions, then hey, they really don't believe it. We, we have to pray expecting. What's Psalm 62 5 say, please? My rest or my soul in God alone. My hope comes from Him. My hope comes from Him. He is going to move, He is going to work. He is God. He's going to work all things out for our good, He's going to take care of us. So, Jesus, uh, number eight, He taught us a pattern for prayer, and that pattern is uh, your kingdom come. We talked about how there's that intimacy. The intimacy is our Father, Dad. And then the pattern is your kingdom come. And what that means is we're putting God's concerns above ours. When we want what God wants, God honors that. When we want God's will in our lives, not we want our will for God to carry out, but when we want God's will, when we're at the center of God's will, it changes everything. You see, it's, it's easy for us to want what we want. But when we start wanting what God wants, and what does God want for hurting people? Healing. What does God want with broken pe- for broken people? Mended. To be whole. That's why we're here. When we desire to do what God wants... God honors that. God blesses that. Look at number nine. How our prayers can harmonize with God's kingdom and God's First of all, be nourished in Scripture. Scripture is so important. Well, you said earlier the devil doesn't mind when we read the Bible. Uh, He doesn't because he can twist it, but that's why you get into the Word of God. That's why you get into, uh, whew, there, there's, I was just this afternoon, I was listening to, to some podcasts of some, some pretty well-known teachers, uh, biblical teachers that are not teaching biblical truths. Uh, and I, I'm going, wow, one of the persons I looked up to and thought, because you know why? Well, if there's so many homosexual people, then God really didn't say it was wrong. Well, God did say it was wrong. Very, very closely in Scripture. You see, we're living in a culture now where even some of the top teachers are saying, well, this, that's not what this meant. You better be careful. You start changing God's word, you're in a lot of trouble. You'll get struck down. You, you start messing with the word of God, you're going to find yourself in deep, deep weeds. And, and so what, what we see is, is, is God's word, it's here to teach us. It's here to encourage us. It's here to correct us. It's here to rebuke us. It, it's here for us to, how are we going to know to do what God wants us to? Is by getting to his word. I, I had a woman one time tell me, she said, well, I, I'm so busy doing what God wants me to, I don't have time to go to church or, or, or pray or read the Bible. And I said, well, how do you know what God wants you to do? <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't trying to be smart with her. I just, I thought, okay. And, and so the word Tells us, that, that, I love Scripture so much. Uh, you all know I, I read through the Bible every year and, and done it for, uh, I think I'm on my 27th or 28th year, and, and, and I'll read something and I'll say, oh, I've never seen that before. I had to have seen it before. I had to have read it before. But it's something I needed right now. It's something that I've got to learn right now. It's for this time, for such a time as this. That's what it's about. Get into the Word. That, that will help you to pray because also if you pray and, and, and all of a sudden it goes against Scripture, whew, if you think, well, God told me to do this and it's against Scripture, God did not tell you to do that. That was not the one because God does not contradict Himself. God confirms. And so through Scripture, through le- reading Scripture, through spending time with Scripture, that's when you can be built up. Also, learn from prayers in the Bible. Read through the book of Psalms. The Psalms are gorgeous prayers. The Psalms are real prayers. Woo! 
God, what's your problem? <laughs> Where are you at? How come you're not helping me? David in Psalms said he was a worm. Do you, do, you, do you see the Psalms? They're saying, God, why are you so far away? Read, read through the prayers uh, of Psalms. Uh, and I encourage you, I encourage people to, to read five Psalms a day in a proverb. Because every month you will have read through Psalms. There's 150 chapters and then 31 chapters of Proverbs. So you read through five Psalms a day in a proverb. Every month you'll, you'll do it. And, and you will be, now of course Psalm 119 takes about three weeks because it's 178 verses. But you'll be all right. And so here we see it is, is, is when we, when we are, are reading the prayers of the people, the prayer of Jabez, you know, a, a phenomenal book written over that is, Lord, enlarge my territory. You know, when you read the prayers of Moses, Lord, let me see your glory. When, when you read the prayers of Daniel, when you read the prayers of, of, of the disciples, when you read the prayers of Jesus, Learn from them and, and, and receive what that has for you. Then this is a crucial point. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. God never contradicts himself. When I was a youth pastor, I had a man come and, and he said, the Holy Spirit has said for me to do this. And I said, that's not what the Word says. It wasn't anything bad. It was just a little weird. And I said, that's not what the Word says. And, and he said, well, he said, no, I'm, I know the Holy Spirit says. I said, it, it is a spirit telling you that. Because <laughs> spirits will talk to you. But the Holy Spirit will never contradict the Word. God never contradicts himself. And, and, and so that's what is, is so powerful is, is the Holy Spirit is, is, you know how to tell us the Holy Spirit is working on you? Is you're, you're struggling with something. Or maybe you're uncomfortable a little bit. Because if you can do Christianity in your own strength, it'd be easy. But we need the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit. It, it, you know, I, I, oh boy, it, it kills me when someone says, I shouldn't say this, but that's me going, oh, that's the Holy Spirit saying, shh. That means be quiet. Don't say anything else. I, I had a woman in another church, and she'd say, I shouldn't say this, but. And then she'd go on, and I'd be like, no. I screamed wherever I was at, and, and she never took the hint. I said, you are, you are going against the Holy Spirit. He's telling you, don't do this. Yeah, we all know when the Holy Spirit tells us not to do something. And on the other side, we all know when the Holy Spirit's leading us. And so follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit pour out of you. And, and this is very, very powerful. Seek confirmation from the body of Christ. We are here, bless you, excuse you, whatever that was. We are here, I, I said there's only one hoagie. We are here for each other to learn to grow closer to God. You all teach me so much. You don't realize. I learned so much from, from being your pastor. The first church that I, I had a... a I was a young whippersnapper. I had it all figured out. I was almost graduated from seminary. I knew it all. Glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Well, now I'm a lot dumber. The older I get, the dumber I get. <laughs> and, and I was up the pulpit. And I was pounding about the power of God. I was pounding the pulpit. And, and I looked out, and uh, a little Ellen, um, last name just went, Little old lady had stage four cancer and was dying. And she sat there and was smiling and praising the Lord. Whew. Here I was, some young buck in great shape, had everything. And here was a little old lady whose body was broken, who had a rough time, and she was raising her hand. I actually, in the, as I was preaching, the Holy Spirit just grabbed hold of me, and I, I actually, I, I almost fell back as I stepped back, and I had to sit down, and I had to start weeping. And I collected myself, and I said, I see more of God in her than I have in him. You see that? That's why we're here. We're here when we're struggling. That's what the devil says. The devil says, oh, you're having a tough day. Don't go to church. That's when you run to church. 
The devil says, oh, you don't have time for church, or oh, you're tired, you've been at work all day, or you've got this and that. That's when you need church the most, and that's when someone needs you. You are not here tonight accidentally. You're not here randomly. You are here to encourage someone. You're here to teach someone. Inspire. You are here to impact someone. You are here to, to make someone's life better and help them see more of God. That's how they will know you're my disciples, John 13, 34. I love little Carter. I love that little guy. He comes up here and he's got his dollar bill and he looks at everyone. He puts it in there. A couple Sundays ago, he came and high-fived me. And when Carter didn't want to do nothing, he don't want to do it. I thought, that's just like us, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we hide it better as adults. <laughs> Kids are more honest than we are. <laughs> and I, I tell you, I learn. When the little guys and the little girls come up here and they're put, do you know what this, well, you know what's happening there? Something big is happening there. We are teaching these kids. We can come into the presence of God in worship as we give. We are teaching them to give to God. We are teaching them that. And also, a child shall lead them. We, we are seeing that innocence, seeing that obedience. I love, I bless you, bless you. Okay, Hoagie, it's catching. Uh, don't, don't pass it back. I sit there on Sundays, and there are Sundays I can't help but just to bust out because it's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. When a child makes noise. When I was younger, and, and you know, I, I've served some large churches, you know, whenever a child makes noise, there's a three-pew area of distraction. The pew behind it watches them, the pew in front of them turns around, and the pew in the middle goes, shh, be quiet. And, and, and as a younger pastor, I was like, oh, why is a child making noise? I'll tell you what, now, not as an older pastor, as a, what am I, hoagie, middle-aged? Mid season, season. What'd you say, Chuck? Oh, senior. Oh, experience. Season experience. I'll tell you what. When a child makes a sound, I praise God. Because there's a whole lot of churches that don't have any kids. There's a whole lot of churches that they don't hear the sound of a baby. And so that to me is praise God for that. Do you see how we can learn? That's why you're here. You're here to teach me. You're here to teach each other. That's what it's all about, the body of Christ. We have some, we are very blessed here with some very wise people. Amen. We really are. And, and that's why I want to encourage you, for men, come on out tomorrow. We're, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to talk about. You've got to come out. Uh, for women, get involved with the WSG. Get involved with the Rooted. We've got some phenomenal godly women in this church. Woo! My wife, I'll tell you, uh, I married way above my station. Janine's probably doing penance for something in another life. That's bad theology, I know. You know, if my wife ever left me, I'd go with her. <laughs> Let you figure that out. Spiritually, I learned from her so much. She's a real thing. Whew. And there's the times when Spiritually, I'm still growing. There's a deep, deep, deep-rooted faith. Wow. We are so blessed here at Ash Avenue. And I'm not saying that as a commercial. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying, don't miss out. And you are part of that. That's the body of Christ. Number 10, how to pray for personal needs. First of all, we pray for our daily bread. You know, what do we usually pray for? What do we like to pray for? What do some people, and I won't beat us up, what do some people want to pray for? Bad question. Let me give you the answer. Our wants. Thank you, Peggy. Peggy figured it out, interpreted it. We pray for what we want or what we think will make us happier, think will make us better instead of our daily needs. 
about six months ago, boy, I got spanked by God. He spanked. Janine says, he doesn't spank you. Oh, yes, he does right here. He spanks me hard because um, we had a situation where we received a gift, a financial gift. It wasn't much. But I was like, wow, look at this gift. Whoo, I was so excited. Praise the Lord. The next day, we had a bill, an unexpected bill, the same amount, same exact amount. And I will. <laughs> God, what's your problem? How come you blessed me one day and then you took it away? How come you did that? <laughs> I was boohooing and belly aching. And then God said, what, what does the Lord's prayer say? I said, it says, our Father, which art in heaven, help me like name. And he says, what else? Give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. He had given us this gift because he knew the unexpected thing that was going to rise. That was the daily bread. And so that's what we need. When we pray for personal needs, pray for what we need. Also, this is so important. Pray for forgiveness. Pray that, that we are where we should be and growing. And this is the crucial thing. And, of course, this is Matthew. We have to forgive others. If we don't forgive, God will not forgive us. And, and forgiveness is so crucial because too many Christians are allowing seeds of resentment and bitterness to reside in their heart, and they crowd God out. God is not going to wait in line. God is not going to be one of the things in our heart. And, and so if, if there's anyone we've got to forgive, don't let anyone get in the way of your relationship with God. Don't let anyone block you from knowing God. Don't let any situation, it's not worth it. Nothing is, worse, your, nothing is worth your eternal soul. Nothing is worth losing your eternal soul, I should say. And that's what we need to say. If there's anything in our heart, we got to get rid of it. Oh, Pastor, I, I've, I've tried to forgive you. Try one more time. You try one more time. You try one more time. You forgive until it's forgiven. The Eskimo word forgive, for forgive is very powerful. It's, it's the ability not to think about it anymore. So you got to forgive. you got to forgive. Because if we can't forgive, then maybe we've not been forgiven. Another thing very powerful is we need to pray for victory. That is, it, it, God has so much for us. Wow. It, it, God wants us to have lives abundantly. Woo. Man. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, he says he can, he can do more than we can, immeasurably more than we can imagine or ask. I can imagine a lot. God can do more than that. Wow. It is so neat to see how incredible God is. It's so fantastic. You want to see God moving, you go over to the youth center. You've got a group of rough kids at times. But praise God that for four hours a day, they're not doing drugs. Not having sex. Right. Not doing something they shouldn't do. Not getting in trouble. Do you see God is moving in incredible ways? And, and there is victory. When we were given the vision... I had people come and say, it ain't going to happen. I said, okay. God is moving. God is victorious. Woo, let him be victorious in your life. You are more than a conqueror. You're not just a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So number 11, some practical advice. Number one, pray persistently. In other words, don't give up. In Luke 18, Jesus told the story of, of the widow who kept going to the judge. And it, I love that, that parable because it says the judge didn't fear man nor God. In other words, he didn't care. The judge didn't care about no one. But it said the widow kept coming, and he finally said, okay, whatever you want, just quit coming and bugging me. Leave me alone. Keep coming to the Lord. Now, make sure it's in God's will. Make sure it aligns with Scripture. Make sure it's what God wants. Not just Remember, it's not a want, but it's a need, not a want. Pray persistently. Pray in faith. Pray believing. Faith is believing when it doesn't make sense. Faith is hanging on when everything in us says let go. 
Faith is, is, is trusting when it doesn't make sense to keep trusting. That's what faith is. And, and what's so powerful is, is if we just have a little bit of faith, if we have a little bit of faith, we can say to the mountain, jump into the sea, and it will jump into the sea. Just a little bit of faith. And God honors that. And then another crucial thing, pray for others. That's so important. If you don't have anything to pray for, I will give you a list. In fact, Melissa and I were talking right before, we're going to start a, some type of deal where we pray for the kids at the youth center. And I can tell you what, these kids aren't getting prayed for anywhere else. Amen. Amen. I don't actually do it, but they need help. That's right. Amen. So I want to encourage you, when we pray for others, when we pray that we, that we can come together, and for, for people who aren't doing what they should do, pray for their salvation. We may be the only ones praying for someone. We may be the only reason God's mercy is at someone's doorstep, doorstep or, or God is giving, granting mercy. We may be the only one that's, that's protecting. You remember Abraham? Woo! God said, I'm done. I'm done. Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm done. And Abraham said, if there's 50, remember Sodom and Gomorrah had a, a million people. That's a lot of people. And Abraham said, if there's 50, if there's 50 righteous, 50 out of a million, God says, I, I, won't, I won't mess with them. I won't do it. Then Abraham started counting. Ooh, man. What if there's 45? That's his anger still up. How many does he get down to? Ten. What if there's ten? That is less than a percentile. That's 0.001%. If there's ten people, I won't do it. Yes. You, you know, uh, Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's wife, once said, that uh, there must be at least 10 people praying in San Francisco. Because <laughs> I don't know, there must be 10 people praying in California that that state hasn't been cut off and floated out. I lived there. We had so many earthquakes. Uh, it just, folks, keep praying for your unsaved loved ones. Pray for them because you may be the only covering of mercy. And God may be holding back his judgment because of what you're doing, your prayers. That's right. Borrow time. And so, And if you don't believe we're in the last days, uh, you're not watching the news. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It is. It's sad. That's why the church, the church is more needed now than ever, and the church can shine. The church can shine. When we are the church, people will be drawn to the church. Because when we are the bridegroom of Christ, when we are his bride, when we're the bride, when we are the bride of Christ, people will be attracted to the groom. So, we have the greatest day of their lives. That's right. So, so love on each other. Be a people of prayer. Pray, pray, pray. All right, would you please rise with me? Because it's 415. Somewhere. 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 So. I'm going to bless you all, and then you bless someone else. Father, thank you for this day, this time. And, Lord, uh, we all know what we've talked about. We all have heard this before, but let us pray. Let us be a people of prayer. Let us be a people who are enjoying and connecting with that intimate fellowship with our Father. You are here for us. Thank you for being our God. Woo! Thank you that you know us and you still love us. Thank you that you extend a mercy and grace to us. Thank you that while we're in process, Lord, none of us are perfect yet. Thank you that, Lord, you're working on us. And so, Lord, today, bless my brothers and sisters. And may they experience a connection and communion with you in a powerful way. And it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.